great to be back. My accent isn't really a Scouse accent, but I am, trust me, I am from Liverpool. I've just traveled around a lot now. Now I've got this sort of weird accent, accident, accident, accident of an accent. <laughs> I can't even talk now. Um, so anyway, it's great, great to be back. When I knew uh, TEDx was happening and I spoke with Herb uh, earlier in the year and found out that one of the TEDx's was going to be in Liverpool, I pretty much begged actually to come along to this because I think, A, I think TED is just a fantastic uh, kind of organization set of talks, but mainly because it was an opportunity to kind of come home and uh, any opportunity to come and spend time with the family, but also to come and spend time in Liverpool is good fun. When I spoke with Herb and, and the team here and I was, you know, kindly invited to come and speak in Liverpool, it, for me, it's, it's just a great thing to come and do. You know, I'm based in London, our head office is in Reading. Frankly, you know, we don't get out into the north, into the regions enough, I think, both as uh, Microsoft as a company, but also just generally, I think, you know, technology uh, tends to sort of gravitate in the south, or people think it gravitates in the southeast. But, uh, you know, having spent time up here, certainly spent time up in the northeast with the Thinker Digital crew. And it, it's kind of like when, you know, when I think of Liverpool, I think of creativity. And you, you think of these guys, hopefully everybody knows who they are. Uh, it would be sad if you didn't. And, it, you know, it's a pretty creative place. So what I wanted to do today was just sort of spend a bit of time um, showing you some of the technologies that, that Microsoft is involved in. I think there's this, Herb and I had a really good chat with another friend of ours, Dan Lyons, up in Newcastle a little while back, and, and he made the point that there's this sort of myth that, that Microsoft doesn't do innovation and doesn't do creativity. And I suppose my objective today is to maybe change a little bit of that sentiment. You know, maybe it's true, but I'd like to, you know, spread some seeds of doubt against that sentiment that actually there is some creativity and there is some innovation. This is me. I've been at Microsoft for about 12 years. People often say to me, why the hell are you still there after 12 years? And hopefully the next 15 minutes or so of showing you some technology and seeing the surface table outside will show you why I'm still at Microsoft. I, I get to play in the most amazing toy factory every day is the way I see it. The technology I get to play with is just phenomenal. So kind of a link back to TED, one of the most jaw-dropping, in fact, I think you go to the TED.com and uh, you can sort the videos at TED by most creative or most imaginative. And one of the categories is most jaw-dropping demo. And the most jaw-dropping demo was done by this guy. He's, uh, he's called Blaze. He works at Microsoft. And about three years ago, two years ago, I think, he showed a piece of technology called Sea Dragon. So what I'd like to start with is show you some of the technology that Blaze showed, but then take you on this journey around where has that tech, uh, this kind of journey of where that technology has come from being an idea back then of something we could do with digital imagery into something that literally you can take away now, you can go home, you can play with, you can install on your PC, you can put it on a website. And that's sort of where I want to take you is on this journey of how do we take technology from our laboratories and from our research and put it into the hands of creative people who can do far more imaginative things with it than, than we ever could. So I'm going to spend most of my time giving you some demos. So apologies to those uh, who've seen this, but uh, like I say, I'm going to take you hopefully on this journey. So this is, um, this is a prototype of that technology that Blaze showed a couple of years ago. It's called Sea Dragon. And all I've got here is just a regular kind of mouse with a wheel on. All it lets me do is just scroll in and out. And as I scroll in and out, it zooms in and out. And from a distance, you're probably you know, kind of curious, what is this um, body of documents? It looks like barcodes. It's not entirely clear what it is. But as I zoom in on one of these, if I keep on zooming in, all the way and you can see that it's actually text and it's text in incredibly high resolution. And as I zoom out, I'm gonna move across the page and we'll zoom in on, a, on another area. And you can see, hopefully you can see it does it pretty quickly, but it sort of streams the image in. And basically what this technology does is in the same way that if you're watching a video on the web, so imagine you're watching iPlayer or, or on you know, a BBC program, it streams the video across the web to you because you don't want to download a 500 meg program and then watch the program. You just need the sort of 10 seconds of frames to watch for that period of time. And this does exactly the same thing, but with images. And a few years ago, that probably wasn't that important because the images that were on the web, maybe you'd put a one meg image up or a two meg, two meg image. But some of us in the room have probably got 10, 20. The guy taking photos of me 
now is his camera's probably got 10, 20, 30 megapixels maybe. And you don't really want to download 30 megapixels of image every time you see an image on a web page. So it lets you stream images. So just um, taking a look again at this set of documents, you might wonder what this is. This is in fact the entire works of Charles Dickens at incredibly high resolution. And I can move around the page, zoom in, and you can see as I continue to zoom in, we, we just get more and more crisp imagery. So you think, well, where can you start to take that type of, um, you know, just very seamless experience of viewing uh, high quality images on the web? So that's what Blaze showed two years ago. A year on, this was a, a website that's now publicly available. Hard Rock Cafe, you're probably familiar with. They've got a bunch of restaurants around the world. They also own the largest collection of rock and roll memorabilia in the world, as it happens. But they can't get all of that memorabilia into one cafe or indeed into 10 or 15 cafes. They've got loads of it locked away that people would never see. So they came along and said, well, we think we can use this technology to um, start to put our archive, our rock and roll archive onto the web. So let me show you what they did. They've gone around, they haven't put the entire thing on, but you can go to this website now, uh, you know, when you get home, just search for hard rock memorabilia. So we can do things like, um, let's take a look by uh, type. And if we go into, uh, instruments, it resorts the images. So now it's just showing me guitars and instruments. The one I'm going to concentrate on is this one here. And each time I click on the image, it moves me a bit closer to the image. Turns out this is a 250 megapixel image of Bo Diddley's guitar. So what does 250 megapixels look like? Well, if you're sat at home, it probably looks like about 15 minutes worth of download. It's not particularly exciting. But if you're sat using this technology, it means that I can zoom in and zoom out. And you can see as I zoom in, it drags in just the piece of the image that I need at that point in time. If I zoom back out and scroll along here, I'm going to zoom in on this. Uh, I'm not a musician, so I don't know what that knurled thing is in the bottom left. What, does anybody know what that thing's called? A knob. <laughs> Brilliant. I, I, it's the tone knob. Fantastic. So that's it. I'm going to scroll in on the knob. So as you can see as I scroll in on the knob, then the image gets crisper and crisper. And in this case, we can sort of make out the, the reflection of the guy who's taking the photograph. If I go across the guitar here, what's this piece in the middle called? The bar or something. This piece where my mouse is. The what? The pickup. OK, so on the pickup here, if we go in this bit here where the mouse is, that's the thumbprint of the person who was taking the photograph. So you can see it's just a fabulous way of starting to work with very high resolution, resolution images in a really seamless way. You don't look totally stunned yet, so let me try something else. Featured artists. We're going to go local, we'll try the Beatles. So there's a lot of Beatles stuff on here, some very cool Beatles stuff, things that you've you know, probably never seen before, like this uh, harmonica up here, and you can go in and take a look at it in quite a bit of detail. But there's one very special item on here that's been uh, slightly modified. So I'm going to scroll in on this one. This is a letter that the band sent to the tour security guy in 1964. And as we zoom in, you can see the image there just very quickly got crisper. This is coming in live across the web. It's not stored on this PC. This is all across the web. But you can see the guys chose to sign it in their own inimitable way, just with an, an ink splodge. And uh, we can scroll on along. The piece I want you to concentrate on, in the top left corner here, Hard Rock have done something quite special. They've taken, with Sea Dragon, the, this technology, you could take an image and embed another image and embed another image. So what that means is they've put this sort of artificial stamp in the top left corner. And it turns out that it's 16 of their, um, their restaurants from around the world. This one right here that we're going to focus on is the Paramount. Turns out this is where the Beatles played their first gig in 1964 when they went to the US. So keep concentrating on the Paramount. I'm going to scroll in on this window here. And you can see, actually, they've embedded an image. And this is the suit that the guys wore when they flew over there on TWA. These are the cheesy little TWA bags they were given. And if we scroll into this thing right here, this is another picture inside the picture. And it's a caricature of the four, four band members. And you can see we can scroll right in there and see the kind of uh, plastic detail, if you like, on Paul's face. Go down and take a look at his signature. So it's a very seamless way to look at high resolution images very quickly. Now the real beauty of this is I'm going to scroll back out. So I'm coming all the way back out to the rabbit hole. So I'm going to scroll out and scroll out and scroll out. And you can see just kind of how, how far down the rabbit hole we just went. So it's a great way to use high res images on the web. So the final kind of piece around this is you think, well, OK, that's very cool. It's a nice website and all. What, what can I actually do with it? Well, you can take your own photos now. So two weeks ago, we launched a website called seadragon.com. 
So this is a guy who's got just some fabulous photos up on Flickr called Yoshef. So this is his photo I used at the start. All I'm going to do is um, look at the URL of this photo. So I'm going to copy that, go over to seadragon.com uh, and post the URL in here and click on create. Oops. So again, this is a live site. You, uh, this is what it comes up like. Post the URL in and click on create, fingers crossed. So now what it's doing is it's going to take that image, it's going to upload it to the web, and it's going to see dragonify I don't think that's a real word or even what Microsoft would call it, but it's going to munge that image into a sea dragon image. And I can now take that and drop it onto any web page I like. So you'll be familiar with this embed code down here. I can now take that code and put it into a, an online magazine or an online website. And this is exactly how it would appear. So I can literally just start to zoom in and zoom out on objects in the image. And that's a pretty low resolution. That's about a three meg image. There's 10 meg images and you get the same type of capability. So final thing, just before we leave Sea Dragon, is I'm, I'm asked, well, where, where is this going to be used in the real world? What's the commercial applications for this? And I, um, I was talking with Paul Smith, the clothing company, recently, and they, they asked me that question. They said, well, what can we do with this to improve our experience on the web? And if you think about Paul Smith, you know, I'm going to go and buy a really nice suit for 300 quid online or 500 quid, whatever it may be. It would be quite nice to see something more than a one inch by one inch swatch of the fabric, be able to see a little bit more detail. So I took some photos of a few Paul Smith things in their shop. And this is a wallet and we can see the level of detail. In fact, down here somewhere on this, you can hopefully just make out it says made in Italy there. And if I scroll up on this one, this is pretty nice. If you go in, you can see that we actually get a fairly good level of detail of, of understanding of the level of the stitching and the quality on that. So you can start to see where these types of images and applications can be used out in the real world. So you can go to seadragon.com and play around, that with, uh, play around with that yourself at the moment. A related technology to this that Blaze, who did that original demo, quite often shows is something called Photosynth. And I know some of the guys in here have, have used Photosynth. So Again, apologies if you've seen this, but this is another technology where Microsoft has taken its imaging capability and thought about how can we make an experience on the web better. So what you're seeing here is a kind of 3D model of a space, of a world that's been made up. And each of these points, each of the dots on this screen, if I just scroll out and we navigate around, you can see that we've got this kind of 3D representation of a space. If I press the letter P here, it maps on the photos that made up this space. So what's happened is we've got lots of people who've been to this place in Italy called Montepulciano, and they've all taken photos, slightly different photos at slightly different resolutions, at slightly different angles. And what Photosynth does is allow you to take a collection of photos and just throw them into Photosynth. You go to photosynth.net, you upload all of the images, you don't tell it anything about the space, and it will figure out how to map these photos together how to put them into a visual arena that you can begin to walk around. So when you click on the P button, which gives us this interface, this is what the computer generated model has figured out from these multiple different photos. You start to think of some of the educational aspects of this, you know, pictures of things like, you know, the Great Wall of China or places that perhaps kids or ourselves would never get to go and visit. And now we can start to visit them in a fairly kind of high fidelity experience. So let's take a look at an example a bit closer to home. If I go to Liverpool Cathedral, somebody here you can see at the top has taken 843 photos, put them into Photosynth, and now I can start to walk around, use that same zooming technology as well, and just pan around with my mouse and start to move around the cathedral almost as if I was in, inside the cathedral. As I move around, you can see where different photos have been taken at different angles. And it just moves me around this kind of virtual space. Uh, another one I quite like on this front is there's a view from um, Everton Brown. And you can probably, because you're all local, just make out what those few pinpoints. Let me just move that up the screen a little. So these few pinpoints in this frame off in the distance, as we, um, as we zoom in on this particular image and click on P, you can see that actually, yeah, it's the live birds. And we get that same zoom in image. As we, as we zoom the image in, it pulls down the pieces of that data to build the image that we need. So again, this technology is out there on photosynth.net that you can go and have a play with. A related piece of technology to this, or sort of related, is um, something called photo gallery. So let me just show you a quick selection of photos. These are um, 
half a dozen photos I took when I was at Wembley for uh, an ill-fated England game last year. And if I um, just go through these photos, you can see I did the kind of classic, I want to take a panoramic view of the arena. These are all taken at roughly the same level. It's about six photos. And really what I'd like to do is to be able to put them together into something that's a bit more interesting. So if I click and drag across these images, right hand click and say create panoramic photo, the same group in Microsoft who's building these imaging technologies around C-Drag and around Photosynth, they're also building this type of technology where it very seamlessly can say, okay, I'm going to take six photos and I'm going to build you a composite photo, and that's our composite photo. And in that view, it looks pretty nice. But what gets more impressive is if we take this into full screen mode and I pan around, you can't see a stitch anywhere in this photo. You literally could not make out that this photo is made up of six different photos. Not quite sure what's going on over here with these guys. My suspicion is that the guy in the black shirt has just farted and the guy in the white shirt has just smelt it, but who knows. So anyway, that's just a very simple piece of technology, freely downloadable, called um, Photo Gallery. The final piece that I wanted to show you before I, um, I switch over and show you a video is something that uh, the guys who've seen me present at Thinking Digital have, have seen this piece of technology uh, from its original creator. It's the technology called Worldwide Telescope. And I talked a moment ago about you know, being able to map distant spaces like the Great Wall of China or places that we can't go to. This product is all about mapping spaces that probably many of us will never get to go to. Well, most of us, I would guess, will never get to go to despite Richard Branson's best efforts. Worldwide Telescope is an application that's been in development for about four years that takes um, all of the imagery from the largest kind of telescopes around the world, both on Earth but also telescopes in the sky, and creates uh, a, a virtual environment where you can walk around the solar systems, you can take a look at the planets, you can explore things that you would never have had the chance to see before. And I, I'll be the first to admit that I have no real interest in astronomy or cosmology of any of these things. But when this product first came out and I installed it, I spent probably two hours just sort of drifting around, looking at planets, looking at stars, looking at solar systems, because it, it just is a, a fascinating other world that we will never really get to see. So in this case, I'm just looking at um, an image from the giant Hubble telescope. If I go down here, I can uh, take a look at, so that's that same image. I can skip across and take a look at a different nebula, but basically I can move around the sky in much the same way that you've probably become familiar with moving around maps inside of Google Earth or, or Bing Maps, whatever it may be. I can right click on objects in the sky and it will identify what they are for me, where they are in the solar system. So this is in, in Taurus and it tells me the altitude of the object. I can go straight out to a Wikipedia link and it will tell me about that particular star and where it sits in which constellation and which galaxy. And again, you think about the educational uh, aspects, capabilities. You can build your own tours inside of this. So if you, want, if you were familiar with a solar system or a particular set of planets or stars, you can build and record your own guided tour and publish that out and let other people see that. A few other interesting things in here. We can, interestingly enough, we can take a look at Earth. So um, this is imagery that's taken uh, from telescopes up in the sky that looks down on Earth. So it's kind of quite unique imagery. There's also some other fun things in here. So this is the uh, Apollo 12 landing site. And we can pan around in the same way. They did actually land on the moon, contrary to popular opinion. They, uh, they landed on the moon. Uh, we can see things like um, the rovers that are, this is just bringing in the images across the internet now. You can see they get a bit crisper. So these are rovers that are you know, out on planets taking uh, you know, samples and images of, of places out there. But literally you can just kind of navigate around the sky and be fascinated by the solar system and the, the world that we will never see from the comfort of your desktop. If you're interested in that, go to worldwidetelescope.org and you can just download and install that. So those are just some simple examples of some of the technologies that we're trying to put out there to allow people to be creative with. All of those things that you've seen, you, 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 don't, you don't have to pay for them. You can just go and play with them. They're all on the web. Um, and hopefully they're helping people uh, you know, be more creative in their particular industry. So the next thing that um, I wanted to show you is, uh, is a video. And, and when this is finished, I'll explain some of the background to the video. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, everybody in the future flies business class. Nice. <laughs> maybe. But maybe what you're thinking is that's all a bit Hollywood. It's all a bit science fiction. 
The good news is every single thing you saw in that video is in development now, in, in use, in prototype, in Microsoft offices. I've seen quite a lot of that stuff. Some of it you've already seen today from what I've demoed. Some of it you'll see outside on Surface. You'll see it in, in things like uh, Project Natal that's coming out on Xbox later this year. So that vision, is um, it's not really that far away. And uh, I guess I wanted to finish and say, and that's why after 12 years, I still work for this company called Microsoft because we do do kind of magical stuff. And uh, I'm kind of quite pleased to come out and be able to share some of it with you. So thanks for your attention.